Welcome back everybody, it's OG and today I am trying to set land speed records. I've seen many other KSP2 YouTubers trying land speed records and I thought I'd take a crack at it myself. So what you see here today are the initial land speed records or land speed record attempts as far as I have done them and I spent a few hours trying this. These are my first attempts so it's not to say they will be the last. I'm sure I will come back to this and try to improve upon what I've done so far. The sequence of videos you see here is as I ran the tests yesterday and with each iteration I try to make the craft better and better and faster and faster until I hit some sort of limitation and then I alter the craft and I try again. Um, yeah, I think, I think I did pretty well. I got over 1000 meters per second and I haven't seen many other YouTubers do that. In fact, I've only seen two of them, um, Beyond Earth Orbit and The Orb, though I'm sure there are others. Uh, Beyond Earth Orbit reached 1231 meters per second and The Orb got to 1318. And I'm sure that as time goes on, people will find new ways to exploit various glitches and the physics of the game and be able to go faster and faster and faster. And I hope to be one of them. I'd like to try to stay near the forefront of this record setting. What shall we call it? Frenzy? Obsession? Let's go with passion. It sounds more positive. Yeah, you can see I now abandoned three of the boosters in an effort to reduce weight and complexity and increase stability. Not that it worked very well. But by this stage I was in the high 700s, which was pretty good. Pretty good compared to the norm for speed record attempts. Especially considering this was maybe less than an hour in, in terms of building these cars. Well, cars, if you can call them cars. So, e even though the cars may look the same, just about every time I crash, I go and I upgrade something. I change a wing angle to give me a little bit more downforce. This particular car had downforce issues at the front. The front would scoot around. And so I'd have to turn the wing down a bit more and a bit more. But then you get to a point where you're creating drag because your wing angle is too high and then you need a redesign try something else. Just a little note on the rules. You absolutely do not have to save your car at the end of the run. You absolutely do not have to save your Kerbal at the end of the run. If you look at the history of land speed records for real here on planet Earth, um, it is unfortunate but a great many attempts ended in loss of life. And the important thing for the books was whether you managed to set a new record or not, and not necessarily if you survived it. There you see I got into the 900s. Yes, the, the history of speedruns is, is quite interesting and it's something I've always followed. I've, I've been a speed demon since my early days. Um, and some of the most famous speed record holders did lose their lives. This one goes to 1,108 meters per second and that was actually my fastest run of the day. I didn't know it at the time but I was not able to beat that again. Even though my later cars probably have more room for upgrade and more future promise than this design which I'm running in this video. If you look at someone like Malcolm Campbell who used to do speed runs in I think the 30s or so he was lucky to have survived I think he's it's probably one of the few who did with his Bluebird series of cars but then his son Donald took over and he also ran various iterations of Bluebirds and Donald also survived all of his land speed record attempts but then died on a water speed record attempt 
Now, I'm not certain, but I think he actually held that water record for quite a while. And that was back in the mid 50s, if I remember correctly. And I think they only recovered his body somewhere around 2001. His body and the boat. So shame, he now finally rests in peace. But, you know, th this isn't about taking few risks, this is about taking big risks. Uh, this is always going to be a risky sport. And you do it because you enjoy it and you accept the risks. It's pointless living a life where you cover yourself in cotton wool and have no experiences. I certainly have not done that. Sometimes to my detriment. I'll put the sound on there so you can hear some of the boosters and things now. Because I, I like listening to rockets too. Especially the SRBs. It's hard because there's not a lot of information to go on for the game at this stage, like which wheels are the best, what, what is their rolling resistance, what is their air resistance, uh, how much speed can they take before they shatter. Now, surely you wouldn't put a Clydesdale on a rocket, OG, that's just stupid. Yeah, no one puts Clydesdales, <laughs> Clydesdales on a car, <laughs> that, just, that just wouldn't work. Okay, you put a Clydesdale on a car. Yeah, that's going to work real well. That front wheel is holding up just dandy. I, I still had to try though, didn't I? Unfortunately, I'm still stupid. So I tried again. These wheels are not happy. Note there are now two front wheels. Look, so even if you're not setting new records, <laughs> at least you're having fun. And you are learning. So if one Clydesdale doesn't work, how about two? Yeah, they're a little bit low ridery, lacking some ground clearance. But when I did this run, I realized that this design has some merit, even if the run itself was rather terrible. I did like how it ended though. <laughs> yeah, I raised the suspension and then the wheels fell off. But nobody said you have to have wheels for a land speed record attempt. Did they? Anyway, it turns out you have to have wheels for a land speed record attempt. You know, the first time I built the Clydesdale rocket, it, it kind of sat there fine. And then subsequent ones just kept failing. No matter how many wheels I kept putting on them. I realized the wheels were probably a bit small and then I ended up upgrading them as we shall see shortly but first I'm trying to run down a runway without wheels again because that worked so well the first time it does look pretty though and I have to give it marks for that and also it looks like jet speed record cars of the past There we go, proper aircraft landing gear. And this one just hops around all the time. And I don't know why, and I tried changing the suspension settings over and over and tried time warping it away and it just would not calm down. So eventually I did get this car to work as you will now see. And then I just kept lowering the suspension. Not, yeah, what do you say? Uh, lowering the wheels into the body of the car to reduce the ground clearance and also to try and correct the angle because obviously the more forward the rockets are pointing as opposed to downwards the more forward speed you can get 
And with a little bit of fine tuning, the run started to go well. My early designs had parachutes on them and then I found I was getting to the end of the runway and it kind of didn't matter that I had the parachutes because there was no way I was going to stop in time and probably no way the parachutes would even deploy. Yeah, those wheels just didn't stop spinning. I thought you might like to see that. So what I did here was greatly reduce the amount of fuel in the boosters so that I could accelerate faster because you only really need as much fuel as what one run uses. Beyond that, you're just carrying extra weight. And there I'm very close to getting 1,000 meters per second over land again. One thousand and catastrophe just as it should be with Kerbals anyway I think I'm pushing this design basically to its limit and I don't think there's too much to be had out of this particular design but it's taught me something and I've had a couple more ideas also watching other people's videos I've had more ideas about how to work on stability and thrust and the weight problems experienced so I'm definitely going to be back with more I won't say crazy designs but more creative designs and join me for those videos thanks for joining me on this one OG, out.